What's going on, saviors? GH here. Today I figured we're gonna do a free-to-play anime MMORPG tier list for the MMORPG I checked out in 2021. And keep in mind guys that these are my own opinions and to sum it up, I will rank them based on how I like them and with that said, this is my anime MMORPG tier list for 2021. Let's do this! First up, Aura Kingdom, an MMORPG released in December 2013 by X-Legend and it's one of the last two anime MMORPG that X-Legend created that's still available officially. And based on my gameplay which I did in September, overall it was a decent MMORPG with all the things that you would expect from one. A variety of classes to choose from, character and equipment progression, and a beautiful and vibrant world. I like it other than the fact that its population is very low. So I'm gonna put Aura Kingdom in rank A. It's a fun game with about 8 years worth of content but it needs better monetization and regular updates. Second game is Closers. It's an instance based action MMORPG released in December of 2014. Closers to me is one of those games that look really nice but when I play long term, I can't seem to get into the game and based on my gameplay, I had fun. The combat was the main thing I really enjoyed about the game. But the stages though is repetitive but I played a lot of instance MMORPGs and all of them starts you out with the repeating stages. Anyway, I'm gonna put closers in rank B. So our next game here is what's this? Dragon Ball Online. It's an anime MMORPG based on the most popular anime, Dragon Ball Z. It starts you out with a character creation and from there, they will let you choose from the human race, the Namics, and the Majin Buu's. Then you start your journey, questing, exploring the Dragon Ball Z world, they created and participating in tournaments. How awesome is that? A traditional MMORPG with a Dragon Ball skin. Even though the game didn't run well, I still enjoyed it cause I wanted a Dragon Ball MMORPG so if I'm gonna rank it, I'm gonna put it in rank S even though it ran like crap. I hope we get a proper Dragon Ball MMORPG that will stand the test of time. Next game is Critical Reboot, a hyper stylized anime brawler game featuring over the top action. Yep, that's how the game describes itself. And for the most part, it's true and in my gameplay, I like how detailed the character model looks and the combat is really hyper stylized but i didn't feel the sense of character progression because i didn't even notice that i was high level already and i barely played but overall the game still looks recent and the combat is satisfying enough and with that said i'm putting critica in rank a coming up is dragon next i mean dragon nest a game focused on instance dungeons but with explorable regions. It's released by Identity Games in March 2010, way back. When this came out, I was hyped for this game and I played it and participated in PvP. But life interfered, regardless I had fun. And in my playthrough of the game in October, I definitely liked the combat and the effort that they put into the storylines. And I'm gonna put Dragon Nest in rank S. Next we have here is Dream of Mirror Online. I know some of you have played the game and enjoyed Domo in the past. But today, oh man, I still remember the struggle on trying to like the game. And I tell you right now, uh, I failed. Dream of Mirror Online or Domo is a retro anime MMORPG released way back in 2005. And I will put it in rank B. Next game is Dungeon Fighter Online. It's a 2D side-scrolling instance-based MMORPG released in August of 2005. And according to the news sources, at one time, it's the highest grossing game. And that made me curious and I downloaded it way back. And to be honest, I didn't see anything special so I don't know what people saw in the game. And based on my gameplay, the game is entertaining, the action combat is satisfying enough, and the amount of content the game offered is amazing. So I'll put DFO in rank A. Coming up next is Eden Eternal, an anime MMORPG released in 2010 and is developed by X Legends. This is not one of the last two anime MMORPGs X Legends created that's still available officially, 
because Eden Eternal is no longer available officially and it can only be played in private servers. And my starting experience of the game was generally entertaining. I like the world of Eden Eternal but the combat though is passable. Even so, the raid dungeons made the game fun mainly because of how well made it is and the ability to choose any class you want anytime is a feature that really made it shine. So I'm gonna put Eden Eternal in rank double S. Now, Elseworld. It's a side-scrolling instance-based MMORPG made by the creators of Grand Chase, KOG. Playing Elseworld in 2021 made me realize that I skip on a lot of fun MMORPGs cause I skipped Elseworld even though I saw a crap ton of ads for this in the past. Anyway, I played it in April and I must say, it's a fun hack and slash type of game. It got colorful graphics, tons of characters to choose from, and a world filled with dungeons to raid. And I'm gonna put Elsword in rank A. Next we have here is Fiesta Online, an MMORPG currently maintained by Gamigo or Gamigo. In the past, I've always seen ads for this game, posters everywhere. But I never really tried it cause why would you name your game Fiesta? What's next? Christmas Online? <laughs> Anyways, my starting experience of the game was entertaining enough but admittedly, the quest system is a bit confusing. Now the combat is tab targeting which works but I prefer action. Overall, it did give me the MMORPG game I was expecting and the game seems to be very much alive. So I'm gonna put Fiesta Online in rank A. Next is Florentia Online. This is one of those MMORPGs that tried to add ship combat and exploration in their game. And I must say, I appreciate this because I've always wanted that kind of feature in my MMORPGs. And looking back, Florentia is a fully pledged MMORPG with all the things that you would expect from an MMORPG. I like the graphics and as I've said, the ship combat. But the game felt clunky though and it feels incomplete. And also the population might be a problem though and with that said, I'll be putting Florentia Online in rank B. Okay, oh my god, I think we're halfway on the tier list. And following Florentia Online is Flife, one of the earliest open world anime MMORPG released in 2004. I played this in the past so I might be a bit biased on this but I'll do my best. Flife starts out really slow. I mean, you can call the game Walking Simulator MMORPG cause you'll be going back and forth for the quest. But thankfully, after reaching a certain level, you'll be using a flying mount that fixes the walking problem. And more on the questing, there's an arrow to follow so it's easy to do. And the combat is tab targeting and you guys know how I feel about tab targeting. Anyhow, I'm putting Flife in rank double S. Now, God's War, an anime MMORPG set in ancient Greece with a Greek mythology theme. And starting the game out in 2021, I remember having problems with the resolution cause it wouldn't 1080p. But aside that, it was a seamless MMORPG experience that didn't give any more problems. And I'm gonna put God's War in rank A. Next is Grand Chase, an anime MMORPG from 2003. Yeah, about 18 years old. 2003 was the PlayStation 2 days and I wasn't able to play Grand Chase because of that. When I played Grand Chase in April of this year, overall it's fun. One of my favorite genre is beat em up and in a way, Grand Chase kinda is. I also like the graphics but to be honest, I didn't like the UI as much cause I'm always searching where's this and that but the gameplay made me push on. So I'm putting Grand Chase in rank S. Coming up next is Grand Fantasia. If you watched my old videos, you know I played this hardcore to a point that I quit the game because nobody wants to play with me in PvP. So I searched for a new game to start anew. And starting over again from the beginning in 2021, I saw that nothing much has changed cause probably the updates are all in the end game. I still like how it looks and how it plays and of course I still enjoy the game and I will put it in rank double S. And following Grand Fantasia is Iris Online. I played this before 
in I think 2012 just before it's gonna be shut down <laughs> yeah I know what timing anyway this is now only available in private servers and looking at my playthrough I remember the feeling of regret because this game has the potential the graphic aged very well and the overall gameplay is what you would expect from a traditional MMORPG. All in all, it was entertaining. I like how alive the game is, and I'm putting Iris online in rank A. Now, Kurt Spell. I've recently checked this game out, and to be honest, I'm impressed at how awesome the game looks, but I also wanted more from the game like exploration. Kurt Spell is an instance hub based game that could have been like Genshin Impact, but MMO. Anyway, as it is, it's still fine and fun, and it's action combat. Generally, it's a decent game, and I will put it in rank A. Kurt Spell really came close to something that I really wanted in an MMORPG. Coming up next is Luna Online. It's a cutesy anime MMORPG released in Korea in 2007. And what I remember when I last played it is having inventory issues and trying to figure out why the game is crashing. But overall, I like how it looks and there's a lot of people in the town which is a good sign. And with that said, I'm putting Luna in rank A. And of course, Fantasy Star Online 2 New Genesis. In my opinion, it's currently the best free-to-play MMORPG out there. It has great graphics, an open-world environment, and fast-paced action. Even though, admittedly, the content is very lacking. Even so, to me, PSO2 New Genesis is my top 1 anime MMORPG. Rank SSS. And speaking of one of the best MMORPG I played, it's Ragnarok Online. It's an MMORPG first released in August 31, 2002. Let's go straight to the rank. And honestly, to me, it's a rank triple S. But right now, there's no real stable official server for Ragnarok Online. And even if you try it now, the chances that the server going under is very high. So I'm putting Ragnarok Online in rank double S. If you look at the game right now, they improved on a lot of things to make the game much more easier to play, but the thought of another server going down is unbearable to me. And what's next is Saint Seiya Online. I've always seen this franchise on the internet but I never really tried it or what I mean is see it. And when I was searching for an MMORPG to play, I saw that there's an MMORPG for it so I tried it and I had fun. They really captured the anime look of the game and you could go Power Ranger and get better abilities. Overall, I really like it but it feels undone and incomplete so I'm gonna put it in rank A. What's next here is Seal Online, an anime MMORPG from 2003 and for an old game, it's very playable. But I remember trying to change the text size cause it's too small. And I'm having the difficulty of reading it and it kind of affected my gameplay. Long story short, it gave me problems. So I'm putting it in rank B. Now, Soul Worker. It's an instance based anime MMORPG released in 2016 and it starts you out with characters to choose from with its own story that you can follow. The questing was easy and the combat is not boring. I remember liking the anime aesthetic of the game and having fun in the boss fights. And I guess the only thing that I didn't like is the conversations in the game. It's lengthy but anywho, I like the starting experience and I'm putting it in rank S. Second to the last is Spirit Tales, a chibi anime MMORPG released in 2011. I've always wanted to play this cause it's one of those ex-legend MMORPG that Air Games didn't publish. And now it's only available in private servers and in my time playing it, it wasn't really revolutionary but I really like the world wherein the map or the environment looks like we're in a small planet. And it felt quite unique and because of that I'm putting Spirit Tales or Glory Destiny online in rank A. And finally, Tree of Savior. I played this for about 4 years and that speaks for itself. But right now, my type of players 
isn't exactly the target audience of the game anymore so I had to stop and honestly I felt like I had my fair share of playing the game and with that said I'm putting Tree of Savior in rank S. And that's my tier list guys thank you for watching and if you like the video hit the thumbs up, share and then subscribe to be part of the gaming hardcore family. And as always this is gaming hardcore. See you in the next one.